Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Amanda Lacaz from Linus. How are you today? I'm good, good thanks, thanks, Tracy. How are you? Um, Amanda, we are just thrilled to see record sales, record production, record everything from your last quarterly results. Can you tell us what happened and give us an update, please? Yes. If you're delighted, I've got to tell you we're really delighted. Um, so as you would be aware, over the last three years, we have been progressively improving our production results. And we now have 100% of our NDPR production um, capacity operating, and we're actually performing at about 110% of main plate. So we are at a run rate of 500 tonnes per month. So that's great. Our costs, as you know, over the last three years, we've spent a lot of, you know, put in a lot of effort to actually take control of our costs, and we've continued to do that. And for some time, we've said to the market, we are strongly leveraged to any improvement in pricing. We saw some significant improvement in pricing in, the, in what for us is the first quarter of our financial year, the September quarter. And of course, just like we said it would, it's all fallen to the bottom line. And of course, you mentioned NDPR, and for the audience that may not understand what that is, where that's neodymium, presidium, magnetic materials, we call them technology metals, and you're the number one, or you're the second largest producer in the world of, of these rarers, is that correct? Yes, it's a, it's a really lovely badge of honor that we get to wear now. Um, so Northern Rare Earths in China is the largest producer. We're the second largest producer at a as I said before, 500 tonne per month run rate. And um, because we don't consume any in our downstream operations, we're actually the largest supplier to the free market. And of course, with a looming global shortage of this supply, of these magnetic materials, can you just talk to us about what you see happening in the market uh, in this upcoming year? So I think as we look at what's happened with the pricing over the past little while, there are you know, a couple of key key measures, key key influences on that. The first is demand remains strong, but even over the last couple of years, when the price was you know abominably low, uh, the price the demand was always strong. But today, what we have is we have an uh, accelerating and an expectation of further acceleration in demand as electric vehicle production increases as production of wind turbines for wind energy increases and as we continue to have significant production um, demand for electronics. These are the three key end use segments. So there's an expectation of accelerated demand. On the other side, there has been significant supply side reorganisation has occurred in China. There has been a clampdown and the Chinese government I think is to be congratulated on their approach to um, improved environmental performance across a number of industries, so not just in rare earths. And that has seen some operations which are not um, uh, environmentally compliant being shut down. And so we certainly have a situation today where a lot of the illegal material which was in the market has come out. But our forecast, if electric vehicle uh, uh, demand continues the way that we think that it will. The world is going to need the equivalent of a new Linus every four years. Um, and actually, just by the by, we think the best new Linus is, is Linus. Well, of course, with the way you've managed your debt as well, you're looking at becoming quite the uh, acquisition player, I would uh, contend, moving forward. So speaking of the debt, everyone on the street's talking about that and how well you've managed it and, and the conversion that you, uh, Linus, has done here in the last year. Can you talk to us a little bit about this? Um, yeah, look, I, I, I think the first thing that I want to do is I want to acknowledge the importance of our vendors in our corporate recovery. Um, they have operated as partners to our business over the last three years when market conditions have been difficult. So since the beginning of our, uh, of our financial year, at that time we actually had $425 million in debt. Uh, $200 million of that was our senior secured facility and $225 was our uh, convertible bondholders. 
In the past three months, we've paid down 30 million on the senior secured, which now sits at 170 million. That is held, as I think you would recall, by JARA, Japan Australia Rare Earths, which is Dog Meg and Sojits uh, in Japan. Uh, as well as that, on that particular facility, we have extinguished some trailing interest liabilities related to calendar year 14 and 15. In terms of our convertible bondholders, you may recall that in uh, November last year, our shareholders approved some changes to that facility, including resetting the conversion price. As a result, over the last uh, three months, it's been attractive for those bondholders to convert. They've converted in a very orderly fashion, essentially placed the stock with a number of long-only funds in the market, which has helped to ensure in, improve our share register. And I think going into this, our logic was that the dilution was priced into um, our share price, and I think as the conversion has occurred, that that has proven to be right because the bonds started converting when the share price was sitting at around about 11 cents. Um, yesterday, it closed at just over 20 cents. So we've gone from, you know, we've actually increased our market uh, cap by about two and a half times in the last four months. Well, I was about to congratulate you, Amanda. You're about to break the uh, billion-dollar market cap uh, marker marker here. Your shareholders must be thrilled. Oh, so because I'm an Australian, I can tell you that in Australian dollars, we're, we are over the billion dollars. It was something that I was watching very closely. Um, and our enterprise value now is, you know, around about $1.4 billion. And so that's, you know, we're, we're very, very pleased with that. And I think just to to um, just to finish on the bonds, we now only have 96.5 million of uh, the convertible bonds left as debt within our business. So our balance sheet, I, I, I say this to some people, I no longer wake up at three o'clock in the morning with cold sweat worrying about our balance sheet. <laughs> Well, Amanda, thank you so much for joining us today. And again, congratulations to you and the entire team of Linus. Thank you so much, Tracy. It's always a pleasure to have the opportunity to speak with your subscribers.